And the new COVID-19 variant Omicron is driving up cases around the world, of course, sparking a lot of concern. Dr. Anjali Kutsia is the was the first to raise alarm bells about this new variant in South Africa, has been since treating Omicron patients, and she joins us now from Pretoria. Doctor, we appreciate you joining us. Uh, we don't have a lot of time, but I want to be able to get the sense of how different this variant is compared to Delta, for example. Uh, good evening. I'm not sure whether it's night or daytime at your place. Um, thank you for asking us, um, Anthony. Very interesting viral infection that we are seeing uh, or clinical pictures that we are seeing with the Omicron variant. Different. It's totally different from um, uh, uh, um, the Delta, especially in regards of the loss of smell, taste, uh, oxygen requirements. Um, as well as what we call a tachycardia, an elevated pulse rate that we have seen quite a few times um, with the Delta um, variant. So, uh, so, so what is the symptoms? The symptoms is actually quite easy. Someone said it's very like, very much like a cold or a flu type of symptoms. Yes, I think we can say it's very similar to that. Um, so it's the, the what we will say: the body aches and pains, the muscle pain, the headache and the um, tiredness or fatigue that would uh, accompany it for about one to two days, slight sore throat. And that's uh, more or less the majority of patients complain coming into the surgery. Mm -hmm. And why that is important to understand is um, if you are not on the alert or on the lookout for these type of symptoms, you would easily miss it. Uh, we also used to Delta to seeing extremely sick and ill patients coming in. And with the Omicron currently, the um, clinical picture is that of, as I've said, colds and flu type of, in, in regards of the body aches and pain. It's not, they don't have a cough, a severe cough, and don't have a running okay. or a blocked nose, as you would see with your upper respiratory tract infections. Important to note, but when it comes to the overall transmissibility, I know the early days, but what are we seeing so far? So it's quite um, fast spreading, whether it's more transmissible than Delta, only the time will tell us once if we have reached our um, top of the um, fourth wave. But for now, um, it seems quite steep. But I'm not sure whether it's, it would be more contagious or more um, fast spreading and, and, and at the end of the day. So uh, we will know in South Africa within the next uh, week or two. Our modelers are telling us that in the Gauteng region, um, we should see um, our peak within the next two weeks. And we can already see there's a slight um, or a, a decrease in patients coming in into the surgeries. The current vaccine, is that protective enough? Do we know at this point? So in South Africa, we only have Johnson & Johnson and Pfizer vaccine. It seems like um, they definitely um, uh, protect against severe disease at this stage. We know that the majority of patients, 99% um, that was admitted in the 20 um, district um, hospitals, uh, that's a public sector, was unvaccinated. So we will see going forward. But what we're also um, starting to get clearer the, on, regarding the clinical picture is that although it protects you against severe disease for the vaccinated people, interesting that when you, when the, uh, the, if the vaccinated person come in and complain of their headache and their body aches and pain or their myalgia, um, they will say, it's, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, it's quite severe for them. But the unvaccinated, we have now starting to see quite a few unvaccinated people where your vaccinated people will have a headache, a very uncomfortable headache. The unvaccinated people will, will have a uh, quite a severe headache, quite severe body aches and pains. And uh, so there is definitely a difference between the severity of symptoms experienced by patients, although both mild, but the severity or the intensity, that may be a better word, is um, it's more intense in the unvaccinated people than vaccination, the vaccinated people. Very interesting. Can this be determined by the regular PCR testing and perhaps even by the rapid test? Or does it need to go f for further testing to determine this variant? No, um, Anthony, it is um, your PCR can, can detect it because there's a, 
there's not a so so normally your your other vax uh, COVID nineteen um, variants will give you uh, three uh, or will give you these three genes, and this one has a there's there's a, l a lack of the S gene, so you can pick it up on a PCR once if you know what to look for. It's quite easy, so you don't need to send it away for genome testing or sequencing. So you can pick it up on the PCR, and yes, um, definitely on the rapid test. Uh, just a word of caution on the rapid test. Uh, there's no, uh, what we have also seen, if the patient started this morning, wake up this morning with this headache and this uh, body ache and pain or this myalgia, uh, uh, um, uh, and wanted to come in today for a test, on a, on a rapid test, it would be advisable to wait at least 24 hours um, because you can, uh, if you test too early, it's going to be negative. So, but anything from day, day one, at least 24 hours of symptoms up until at least five days, the rapid test um, are um, very um, uh, accurate and they often rather do a PCR test. Okay, we appreciate this. We appreciate all your time and your insight with this very important issue. Dr. Angelique Kotze, the chair of the South African Medical Association, we appreciate it, thank you. Thank you so much, enjoy your day.